Good evening. The long-planned Turkish military operation in northeast Syria has been launched. Kurdish forces, which control the area, are reporting heavy airstrikes and the start of a ground offensive amid widespread panic. The Turkish decision was prompted by President Trump's announcement that US troops would withdraw from the region where thousands of captured fighters from the Islamic State group are being held by Kurdish forces. Well, President Erdogan of Turkey says that his aim is to create a so-called safe zone cleared of Kurdish fighters. The Kurds were key allies of the US in defeating Islamic State, and they say that they've been betrayed by President Trump. Tonight, Boris Johnson spoke to Mr. Trump, expressing concern about the risk of a humanitarian disaster in the region. Let's go live to our international correspondent, Ola Gehring, who's on the Turkish-Syrian border. Well, yes, within the past hour or so, we had that confirmation from the defence ministry here that the ground offensive is now underway. Turkey has moved very swiftly today, a unilateral action by a NATO nation that has been widely condemned. Britain has been expressing concern, saying that the Turkish assault risks undermining the progress that has been made against the Islamic State group and could destabilize the entire region. And already tonight we are getting reports from one monitoring group that at least 10 Syrian civilians have been killed. In Syria, a new round of warfare. The town of Ras al Ain under heavy bombardment. One of several just inside the border in the Kurdish controlled northeast. It's the start of a Turkish offensive that is alarming Europe, has been condemned by America and is bringing fresh instability to the Middle East. And once again, Syrian civilians forced to flee. A local journalist saw them go. Thousands of people, thousands of people immigrating to the south side. Uh, the, Turkish, the, Tur the Turkish army are shelling by mortars everywhere. From across the border in Turkey, we could see smoke rising in the town of Talabiyat. The BBC understands Turkish troops are now on the ground there. Well, here at the border, we have been seeing and hearing the opening salvos in Turkey's assault on northeastern Syria. In the last half an hour or so, we've heard mortar rounds and artillery fire, and there has been incoming mortar fire from Syria. President Erdogan is calling this Operation Peace Springs, but for civilians across the border on the Syrian side, this is going to feel like one more round of battle in an agonizingly long war. Turkey says the aim of this offensive is to create a safe zone along its border and allow two million Syrian refugees to go home. Today, it was creating new ones. Ankara also wants to drive out Syrian Kurdish forces it views as terrorists. That area uh, is needed for our safety and security for the Syrian refugees to go back to so that they can go back to their normal lives and there is no vacuum to be filled by any terrorist network uh, and also to make sure that Syria is not divided territorially. But Turkey's assault on the Kurds could be costly. They've been crucial in the fight against Islamic State and are holding 10,000 IS prisoners. Now they'll have to focus on resisting Turkey. Tonight at the border, rockets in the night sky. The invasion is well underway as worried nations look on. Orligiran, BBC News, near the Turkey-Syria border. Well, Turkey's military operation and the change of US strategy that preceded it could have far-reaching implications for the region, which has been at the centre, of course, of the fight against the Islamic State group. Our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, is here to look at the potential wider impact. Jeremy. Thanks, Hugh. Well, Turkey's President Erdogan says that he's ordered the operation to close what he calls the corridor of terror along the Turkish border. It's this strip of territory in northeastern Syria, and it might turn into a corridor of disaster if his critics and enemies are correct. Several towns were hit in the first hours of the Turkish offensive. 
That meant civilians were faced yet again with the terrible choice of abandoning their homes and risking the dangers of the road or staying in the firing line. In Washington, President Trump gave the green light to the Turkish plan and says he's had enough of the region. The worst mistake that the United States has ever made, in my opinion, was going into the Middle East. It's a quagmire. We are up to close to $8 trillion, and we're bringing our folks back home. The Turks have made their move because of their long and bitter battle with Kurdish separatists. This was fighting in one of the mainly Kurdish towns in eastern Turkey in 2016. For the Turks, the move into northeastern Syria is a continuation of that fight. Kurdish separatists in Turkey, the PKK, have strong connections with Syrian Kurds. The Turkish state regards all the armed groups as terrorists. But it's much more complicated than that because of the fight against the jihadist extremists of Islamic State. While the US, Britain and others bombed the self-styled caliphate, as IS called the territory it seized, most of the house-to-house -house combat was done by the same Syrian Kurdish fighters that Turkey is now targeting as terrorists. Since the caliphate was destroyed and recaptured, Kurdish fighters, women serving alongside men, have been a key part of the battle against the remnants of IS. The job isn't over. The caliphate is gone, but the ideology and sleeper cells remain. Now, Kurds of the SDF, Syrian Democratic Forces, say they can't continue fighting IS if they have to fight Turkey. And IS has potentially been handed a big opportunity. There's also a big question about IS prisoners, most of whom are guarded by Kurds. With Kurdish attention elsewhere, the dangers of a jailbreak could increase. So the biggest losers in this so far are likely to be those Syrian Kurds who fought with the Americans and their Western allies, and now they feel betrayed. Russia, key allies of the Assad regime further south in Damascus, will be delighted to hear that President Trump wants out of the Middle East. And the risks now include an IS revival, more misery for civilians, and a deeper destabilization of a fragile land. Jeremy, many thanks again. Jeremy Bowen there, our Middle East editor. Well, President Trump, as we said, has issued a statement saying that the United States does not endorse the Turkish attack and that he'd made clear to Turkey that it was a bad idea. Let's talk to our North America editor, John Sopel at the White House. John, when Donald Trump says it's a bad idea, does he actually mean it? Well, that's the central question that he has to answer. If he thinks it was such a bad idea, why on Sunday night did he agree in a phone call with President Erdogan and then put out a statement later that uh, the long-awaited assault would start soon and American troops won't be in the way? There were only 50 US soldiers, but all the time that they were there on the ground, there was not a chance that President Erdogan would have launched this offensive with the risk that American blood might be spilled. And so very few soldiers were keeping the peace and that is what has enraged so many Republicans as well as Democrats in Washington. I've scoured social media to find supportive comments for what Donald Trump has done and it's very difficult uh, to find any. The talk is of betrayal, the talk is of what about the, our soldier, our comrades in arms who fought with us, what happens to the prisoners and also questions about the temperament of the president as well. What about the timing of this? What about consultation? Why has Donald Trump done this after one phone call and very little negotiation with his military chiefs? Now in response to this hostility, Donald Trump has said, look, if President Erdogan goes too far, then America will act and flatten the Turkish economy. And one other quote from the president just a short time ago in the White House here, he said of the Kurds, apparently justifying why they didn't deserve total protection, they didn't help us in the Second World War, they didn't help us with Normandy.